Hey guys, this is Ed from Mission Ed Possible. Welcome to this week's episode of Retrograde, where we go through and rate games using tier lists. This week we have Atari releases on the 2600 from 1983. This is going to be part one. Following week will be part two. Uh, so, so subscribe so yeah. you don't miss it. And ring the bell? What else do you got to do? Right. Well, we've got the little thing that pops up. Honestly. Okay. You know, I, you, we don't typically have to say ring the bell <laughs> yeah first up we have battle zone uh so i really liked battle zone i i felt like to me it, it was s tier it, it the the graphics and and everything were actually in my opinion it was better than the arcade because the uh arcade had uh, vector graphics so this added color i i i had a really good time with, with battle zone sure so, uh, not much more to say, really. It was, it was fun. It's a simple and good game. I, I'm gonna give it an A, because I didn't have fun with it, and it, it's definitely technically very impressive, but it didn't... I don't know. Uh, th this this week has got a lot of good games, but you know. Yeah. It's not one that wowed me, I guess. Fair enough. Very Fair enough. cool, though. Yeah. Next up, Centipede. So all these games, by the way, are games that were, or almost all of them, were uh, in the arcades first. So a lot of these ratings are going to be based on how well they did. Uh, Centipede, I thought, was was really good. Uh, I mean, the mushrooms could have been mushroom-like more than just a dash, uh, but the sound effects and, and the way it played was really good. Um, we actually found out in the manual there was actually a couple hints that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it was like uh, make a make a gap to where you know things come down, and sure enough, it worked really well. I'm Corridor, like, yeah. I have I have played Centipede several times and never really thought about doing that. So I did it on accident before yeah. you said that. Yeah. So it was it was pretty good. I'm gonna put it above uh, Battle Zone here in A. Uh -huh. I thought the theming was fun and it was just a tight experience. My rankings aren't going to be based on the arcade games at all, because I've never played any of them. That's fair. So, Well, that's actually why we have, it's nice to actually have a difference. Yeah, their, their, their representation of those games is sort of moot to me. My experience with these is all pretty fresh, and is based almost entirely just on them. That's, that's cool. That's totally cool. Um, so, Dig Dug. Um, I, again, uh, I feel like it was it was good, but I feel like they uh, they could have done better with some of the graphics, as you had mentioned. You you know you had played it before, but had a lot more detail. Yeah, obviously the, the you know graphics limitations make it a little bit harder. Um, I thought it was a, a good port. I didn't really like the fact that the the dirt had lines on there, and I feel like they didn't have to do that. I'm not exactly sure why they did it, like the little black line, you know, on it. it looked kind of weird to me. Um, but it played well, um, so, yeah. I would actually say, uh, as far as Dig Dug goes, that's, that's still an A for me. That was tons of fun to play. Mm -hmm. It was, it worked really well, and the levels weren't overly hard or overly easy. Right. Everything made visual sense. It, it just was solid without having to really try. Um, one of the things that's interesting about this group, and when we're starting to get to 1983 here, the the quality of the games definitely has all been improved. From If you just compare it to 1982, just one year prior, the games here, granted, they're, they're almost all arcade ports, but they have title screens, they have music, they have all these things that that the previous games really didn't have. And, right. and I really feel like they stepped up their game. So um, so next up we have Galaxian. Um, I've never been a big fan of Galaxian and Galaga. I know people, especially Galaga, people really love Galaga. Uh, those, those shooter games, I'm not a, not a big fan of them. However, in this case, the, uh, the action and the graphics were really, really good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in a where am I gonna put it though? I'm gonna put it before or after centipede. Um, I'm gonna probably put it above centipede. Uh, I thought it was a really good port and a lot of fun. I I think Galaxian was pretty fun. Uh, not more fun than anything else today. It uh -huh. felt a lot like Space Invaders and other such games sure, like it's that. Derivative. It yeah. did it did a lot m more. I think uh, mm -hmm. you know it definitely added on to those things, but it wasn't 
necessarily anything groundbreakingly new mm -hmm. with that. It was, you know, bugs like in Yar's Revenge, right. kind of, and Space Invaders. It was a good combo, though. Mm -hmm. It worked really well for what they were doing, and I, I really enjoyed that. But overall, it just it didn't wow me in the in the way that uh, other games have mm -hmm. so far. Sure. Okay, Gravatar. Um, this is going to be either A or S for me. I really thought that they did a good job with Gravatar. Uh, I'm. Hmm. I'm gonna put it in S. I, I think that what they were doing with the game and how the fact that you could go into the different, uh, you know, different modes, I guess, I don't know what you call it, different gal not galaxies, but the fact that you had a fuel depot and all that stuff and it, you know, it was a lunar lander type of deal. Sure. Uh, I thought they, they did a good job with that. Um, Gravatar was fun, but it was ridiculously difficult to control. And sure. It just, uh, that, that took a lot out of it for me, that there wasn't as much balance there between how technically impressive it was and how fun it was. It, it still was interesting and I wanted to get better, but it just, it didn't really grab me in those first seconds, especially because you can just sit there and then you die to the sun. <laughs> yeah. Which is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a punishing first encounter. Yes. Yeah, so it is it a hard game. Definitely very hard. Um, um definitely. And even in the easier difficulties um, that we kind of tried out, where you have a few more ships, that is more forgiving, but nonetheless, it doesn't really... You know, the one just turns off the gravity at the very yeah. end, but the, even then, it just seems like that's too far in the other direction. Yeah. We had a comment about that's like playing bump, uh, bowling with the bumpers up. You know? Sure, it's like that's, <laughs> that's all well and good, it just it is... What you're doing is good different at that yeah. point, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Also, it's always interesting that they start on the hardest difficulty now, as opposed to yeah. the easiest. You well, think that's the standard difficulty. Yeah, you think it might be alright if you going to have it switch back and forth to maybe have start off in your standard be a little easier and then have it just progressively get harder? Eh. Either way, I think, I think the way I look at it is, in my opinion, the number one mode is how it sh that's like how the, the author intended and i kind of feel like that is the game and so anything more than that is just uh, easier because it is a hard game obviously with the the game selection stuff they know it's a hard game because sure, yeah. otherwise there's no reason to give you a billion ships and stuff because the, you know they, they know it's a hard game and, and so that's the way they they dealt with it whereas the uh, the initial the first game is how that's supposed to be played. It is based off an arcade game. I don't think I've ever actually played the arcade game, um, but uh, yeah, uh, they 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 did a good job with it. Um, yeah. Uh, so Joust. Okay, I had Joust with a kid as a kid, and I absolutely played the hell out of it. Um, the deal is, is that they did have to make concessions between the arcade and the, the home version to where it's, um, I, I'm going to have to give it a, a, an A, but you know, a kind of a low A just because there's some things that they did like the eggs floating around and the fact that they didn't have the eggs hatch on the ground. That's kind of the things that they, they just changed. I kind of feel like they didn't really need to do those changes. Again, I'm based off the arcade. Um, it is a fun two-player game. Sure. Uh, I, I would love to play other versions of Joust uh -huh. because just what I played was quite fun. But, I mean, it just as it was for the Atari port, things are a little visually difficult to read. It's kind of your lance or your, your jousting, you know, spear is so small in comparison it's kind of hard to tell where yes. you are yeah and so it's a little the big hard thing to... is just be on top of the other guy that's really what Th you're there's to a do. lot of that but you know it it comes off as difficult at first to really figure sure. out what you're doing sure sure and uh i i think just as far as a port goes it was a c for me sure. but I, I the concept and seeing it and having seen it in other forms mm -hmm. i would really like to play more of some version of joust i just don't think it's this version of joust fair enough fair enough uh jungle hunt uh i thought they did a good job i, I you know really graphically 
you know, I guess it could have been a little bit better, but it was actually pretty graphically, it was pretty good. Didn't have any problem um, with the graphics. Yeah, um, and and the, the game, how it played and stuff was really good. So I'm actually going to probably put it at a solid A. Um, I still haven't, you know, beat the game before. It'd be kind of a cool thing to actually try to beat it. Sure, I, um, I very much agree. That's That was a game that uh, that really... I liked all the modes. I like, yeah. I like, you know, that, that, that's the that's, different yeah. activities that you're doing, the jumping, the triathlon, the running, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the jungle triathlon. We never yeah. did make it to see the last variation. Yeah, I think of there's, the game. I think there might be four, but I could be wrong. Well, there's right. something that at some point you encounter a guy. Yeah. We never got to that point. Nope. <laughs> uh, it's difficult, but not super much so. It's yeah. pretty easy to get back to stages if you die on like the rock jumping stage, which was yeah. kind of the hardest. Right. It seemed. Right. Uh, not very hard to get back to that, and you know, everything else was just, it was interesting, and I, I thought it did well with the theming. Yeah. Uh, next up is Kangaroo. Um, Kangaroo, uh, I played that quite a bit, the arcade version of it. The the issue, you know, the graphics were um, good. They, they weren't great. They played like the arcade, though. Um, but I'm gonna probably have to give it a B, but above Dig Dug. The, uh, you know, the, the music and the, the sound effects and stuff were pretty good. Um, you know, it did have quite a bit of flashing when, when there was a lot of the monkeys on the screen. Yeah, and stuff, it got, I, I visually thought it was okay. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, it, I could see where the fun is in that game, but yeah. I want to play... All that did was make me want to play the other versions of it, yes. I think is the problem. Yes. <laughs> and that's kind of the, the problem we're running into, I think, or I'm running into, yeah. seeing a lot of these commercials that we've seen, uh -huh. is seeing the 5200 versions yes. and realizing yes. that this, this is, is definitely a, this is an inferior version yes. to other versions. Yes. Inferior to the arcade at this point is not that big a deal. Right. That's kind of expected to a certain extent. Right. But then seeing another version that they released, and it's like, why would I ever get the other one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is so th that that kind of comparison sticks out. But it also just the the concept seems really good, and it makes me want to play more mm -hmm. of something better. The arcade version. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, it, yeah. I've never played it, but it yeah. certainly makes me want to try it. Right. Uh, next up is Krull. Um, so that is, as far as I know, it's an exclusive. Uh, it's based off a movie uh, by the same name. Um, I think that it was definitely interesting what they were trying to do with the game. It's another one that has several different modes. In mm -hmm. that, you know, at the beginning, you know, scenes, I guess. At the beginning, you get married, and then the guys take your guy, your your woman away, and then you have to race horses across the screen, picking up glaives and stuff. Which the first one was really e easy to grab it, but the second yeah, one, not they're really. jamming, and it was just like I'm like, whoa, this is crazy, kind of impossible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and apparently, you can turn around. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. Like, if you wanted to just keep going back and forth, to but get them, you but... lose a life when you do it. I saw oh, that, that happen. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, and it's like so you can maybe go back and get more glaives uh, or lives because mm. it said there might be some lives around. Didn't see any lives, and it's impossible to pick anything up as right. fast as you're going. I felt like it definitely um, needed the manual. Uh, it, yeah. You know, it was not obvious what to do. No. I, I felt like it was very ambitious what they were trying to do. Um, I, I feel like it missed the mark slightly. Um, so, but I'm going to probably, I think, I want to say I'm going to give it maybe uh, still a B, but kind of a low B. Um, I, I, I wouldn't mind playing more of it to try to, to figure out exactly what you're trying to do. Um, but I thought it was it was still good, but not great. I, I'm i going to give that my lower C because okay. the game was visually very cool mm -hmm. and had some neat ideas that I don't think it knew what to do with. Like, oh, you've got a, your w wife's going to get kidnapped. A score in a game like this feels sort of arbitrary because yeah. you're not really going for score because most things don't give you score. Right. You know, I guess jumping over the webs you get score, but it's just something you have to do. 
you could get the most score by continuously jumping over a bunch of them until right before the time runs out, but that's not really how the game presents it to be, you know, mm -hmm. it's not really what you're going for, so it feels very tacked on. And thusly, you know, right at the beginning when all these guys come in, it makes more sense to go to the side and let them, there's, you yeah. can skip the first third of the game that they yeah. have built. Yeah, just let it, let it take your wife. Because they're going to eventually, and yep. you can actually just destroy your chances of winning the rest of the game if you try. And, and here's the thing, if you died, the, either, you know, they get past you or the first time you died they kidnapped her, that's one thing. But the fact that they can just let you lose by playing their game, essentially. Yeah. Playing it how they've set it up, like, oh, I get score, so this is the whole game. You know, a lot of kids don't read the manual. Right. Very poorly set up how that first introduction scene. Looked really cool, though, which is such yeah. a sad dichotomy, because it, mm -hmm. it plays really well overall in a lot yeah. of ways, but it's very obtuse in what you're supposed to do, and I just think... They really should have gone back to the drawing board on what they actually wanted to happen in this game. Well, I think also they are basing off the source material. In the sure, in the, you know, it was kind of interesting. We were talking about the fact that you know he uses the glaive to like destroy the boulders. I'm like, actually, in that third scene, that's what you're doing. You're trying to destroy very the much boulder. so, yeah. And and so I think they were just trying to to make it that way. It's a, it's always hard when you adapt one medium to another, as far as you know game adaptations to movies movie adaptations to games they're always just not sure there. and it's it just... can but you know you can still do better because even though uh several oh, sure. weeks ago we it's a challenge though i didn't love the superman game that we played sure. of course but in that game there wasn't a score every time you got something or you know walked around you were had a task to accomplish right this is a game that needed that that right. needed the opening scene to be until you died or until they got there, but no score. Because if, because having the score and having you die and then just continue without right. the level progressing makes it feel like you're doing something wrong. Because I, I can see, my, I, I did actually several times not know that there was more to it because I would just die just fighting all this horde of guys. And at some point it really feels like the only way to actually do it is to literally step aside and let them do it. <laughs> and it's like... It's true. And the fact that that's yeah. what the game implicitly encourages feels like they kind of failed in telling the story they were trying to adapt. I would say that, you know, the only reason why do you want to include score in games like that is for people that are trying to... You know, if, if you beat the game and you want to possibly beat it better you know it's like ah you're going to beat it you know and, and maybe that that's where time comes in you know in certain games like you're trying to do a speed run um but you know the score makes it so that it's like well i beat the game and i got score x you beat the game and you got you know 20 points higher that gives you maybe a, an incentive to do a better bet i understand in a game like this this is not an arcade game it's more of a adventure game in a way um, they, they definitely could have made it better. Uh, I had never played the game before, so it was it was interesting to me. I had seen the movie once, and it's been several years. Um, but, uh, I think they did okay, but good not great. Yeah, I don't know, it's like having a score in, you know, Final Fantasy VII. Like, every time you do anything, you get a score, and it's like, that feels counterintuitive. To be honest, to be honest Super Mario Brothers has a score. You know. <laughs> But the idea is you're trying to get through the, the world. You're, not, you're trying to beat it. Score is inconsequential, though. To a certain extent, yes. But I feel like the game play also kind of plays into that a little bit. Yeah, but the, the, who cares about the score, usually? Yeah. The, there's a lot of truth to that. And I, I think, in many ways, score has always been kind of a hindrance because it was in these early arcade games, and it's very good in those kinds of games that they tried to then expand it into too many things including like super mario brothers and stuff mm. you're right about that it isn't really necessary and that's why speed running mario is a thing but max scoring super mario the first yeah. super mario brothers isn't right. nobody cares nobody about cares that yeah yeah Super, speaking of uh, Super Mario Brothers. It's true, we do have... Uh, the non-Super Mario Brothers. The Mario Brothers. <laughs> yeah, the Mario Brothers. 
Um, uh, so I thought that, you know, this is obviously a port. I, it was... I felt like there was some there were some major problems with it. Um, the the action for jumping was not very good. Um, no, it was hard to jump. Was, left there was or right. some some graphic stuff that was a little annoying. I mean, the characters looked good, but it was just not as playable as it should be. Um, and and I'm not an overly complicated game either. So yeah. it feels like they really just kind of dropped the ball a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a C. Um, and, and it was. You know, I have to be very kind of critical on it and the fact that, you know, again, we are based, I'm basing it off of the arcade. Um, you know, it has the idea of it, but they, they kind of missed the mark on a lot of the graphic stuff. I, I mean, I've played ports of this game before, uh -huh. and I really enjoy this game, actually. Uh -huh. I used to play it all the time. Um, comparing so you do it, have something to compare it to. Like, yes, having that to compare it to, it's definitely lesser, but even just comparing it to these other games, mm -hmm. it looks way more amateurish than all of these 1983 games. Like, yeah. you look at stuff, even like, you know, looking up at Battlezone and Jungle Hunt, even Galaxian and Gravatar, honestly, it just looked super flat and it looked a lot earlier in the life cycle. It was phoned in. It That's looked, what it seemed like. Yeah, it, it looked boring, even though yeah. it played okay. And even then, it, the jumping was awkward, the way that things kind of moved was awkward, like the fireballs and all other versions, they spin around so you can jump over them. In this one, you have to just jump up to another platform, because yeah. it just goes at head level the whole time. Right, right. Uh, okay, so Moon Patrol. Um, so I am a big fan of Moon Patrol, at least the arcade game. Um, and so playing on the 2600, I don't think I'd actually ever played it before on the 2600. Uh, I kind of feel like they, they did a good job, but not a great one. I feel like that the, the, um, your buggy or your car or whatever, um, could have, should have had better detail. Uh, the, 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 the ships flying around, those were all really good. They, uh, they did a good job on some things. The fact that they had the music in it, even though you had to, uh, flip the switch on the difficulty, which was odd. Very that strange should have been there. there there's no reason the for it not to be the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, exactly. I don't get that. Yeah, um, for that though, um, I'm gonna give it probably a, a B minus, kind of somewhere in... Um, maybe around here. Um, it, you know, I, I feel like there's there's no reason why I would want to play this version uh, of Moon Patrol. Sure. Um, yeah, so. I, I completely understand that. I gotta say, though, having just, if I just had Atari 2600 games to choose from, mm -hmm. I would play Moon Patrol again, because I thought it actually did quite well in just being a fun game. Sure. The music thing is a weird Easter egg, almost? Yeah, yeah, it's where, like, that you have to... You have to read the manual in order to find that out. Yeah. Like, that's I, your, that's your, Because uh, who's going to do that? Eyes, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it doesn't say that it has multiple modes or difficulties, so you wouldn't yeah. really mess with that. Yeah. Um, difficult game in many aspects. Oh, yeah. Uh, pretty quickly, too. But uh, it feels like an overcomable challenge. Like, the more you play, the just the better you get sure, at everything. Sure, sure. So, I would say, overall, not a bad game for the 2600. I, I, I'd give it a, a... Just because of the uniqueness of shooting up and to the side and the jumping, mm -hmm. it, it had a good feel. I, I felt very in the zone while playing it. So, <laughs> you actually did better than me on the game. And what was funny, though, is we got to a certain point and we, and were we couldn't get past time, that one point. Yeah. And that's, that was uh, unrealistically hard. That that was not, not needlessly good, difficult. Yeah, needlessly yeah. hard. Um, so, um, I don't have any yeah. quarters to give it. Yeah, so, it's exactly. not a good spot to exactly. have in the home port. What do you um, have, uh, wrapping yeah. thoughts? What do you think? Um, I feel like that. Uh, it's the the as we said the the level of of the quality has definitely increased. Um, you know we're getting now to kind of the mid level or, or almost late uh, cycle for for the life cycle of the, the um, system. You know these are more of the later years. Sure. And 
the, the programmers have de definitely figured out how to unlock uh, a lot of the, the performance and the, all the different stuff. It, you know, we don't deal with as much of the flashing stuff. No, we we do are... a lot more colors, a lot more I'm, vibrancy. So. I'm impressed overall. I think yeah. the reason my rankings tend to be kind of weighted lower now, maybe at some point we might have to do a little one where we re-rank things now in, in could, context. Could. Just the whole lot, one bigger video of the whole. <laughs> the whole, all of them. Uh, and the just whole, put them in. All oh, the Atari, <laughs> uh, all of the Atari, Atari 2600 yeah. games. Just, yeah. if you want to see that, definitely leave Let a us comment. know, because yeah. I, I wouldn't mind re-ranking some of these, because now looking at them, it's like, these are, in many ways, several of these are definitely way better than games yes. I have put above them. Oh, yeah. But... It's in context for this year. Though. A lot of it is in context for this year. Yeah. And a lot of it is also gaining the greater context of the system as a whole sure. and realizing that graphics can get better, but don't always make games more fun. And sure. sometimes people are kind of stuck in concepts that they don't need to be, like the score mm. in Crawl or, sure. you know, like in Mario Brothers, trying to make everything so much a port and the same that they end up mm. kind of losing some of the fidelity of the the graphics and things like that because i'm sure that's part of it is they ha felt like they ha should put everything possible into it so it lost some of the, the yeah. good feel of it uh also the pow block hard it, yeah there's no there's they no. could have put pow on there could have I mean, put pow on it also in every other version you can land on the pow block yeah yeah, and it's, it looks like a platform more yeah, than a power block. So yeah. you go through and you're like, oh, I guess it's not really there. Yeah. It's so I'd say it's yeah. a good year and we're getting into a stride where things are pulling ahead into actual video. I know this sounds uh, actual video game territory. <laughs> though. Okay. A lot of those early games felt like mini games or sure. not really like. Mm hmm there wasn't any actual meat to them. They were just a couple of dots that made a noise occasionally. Right, right. Whereas here, it's like Jungle Hunt was a guy. It felt like a guy going on a little adventure, even though it wasn't super, you know, detailed. It got the point across really well. Sure. So I'm I'm excited to see what comes even after this. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's it's going pretty good. Yeah, I I was pretty impressed. Uh, I gotta say, some of the games like I had never played Galaxian on the twenty six hundred, and I was like, wow, the colors that they used were really good. They sure. did a really good job with a lot of these, and um, you know, not all of them, but a few of these. Obviously, the top ones, the uh, Battle Zone, it uh, really kind of blew me away that this was twenty six hundred and. It really didn't feel, it felt to me like it was worlds apart from a lot of the other 2600 games we've played. And, and I so, would totally agree. Yeah. yeah and, um, but I, anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, a lot of the other games that, that, that I haven't played because as I mentioned, you know, uh, actually I mentioned in the stream, um, that I had already kind of moved on from, from the, uh, from the 2600 probably by this time or, or pretty soon after this. So for me, I had never played these because I had already, yeah, I'd played like the 8-bit versions or whatever. And so I was used to things being closer to the arcade. Sure. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, well, why would I play the 2600 version when I've got the computer? Yeah. Version? No point. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> so yeah. But anyway, I, I think I think we're I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Let us know what you you know your lists as always, yeah. and uh, if any of these games you have particularly fond or bad memories of, I'd love to hear them. Because <laughs> yeah, some yeah. of these really seem like they could have some uh, very polarizing <laughs> polarizing stories and opinions. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Especially given how different our lists are in some ways. Yes, yes. All right, guys. Uh, well, that's all we have for today. So until next time. See you in the next adventure. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. I post new videos all the time and I wouldn't want you to miss any. If you'd like to see more of this series, be sure to click up here. And if you'd like to see something else, be sure to click up here.